Can you, you know? get private health care plans over there that are more affordable than what you get in the U.S.? Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to head over to Cadiz, Spain, with my new friend, Carol Loomis. Carol, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks. I not be doing well. I'm living in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Well, thanks for doing the podcast. So we're going to dive into Cadiz and, and talk a little bit about affordability and, and if it is affordable for the viewers that are considering moving to Spain and especially in this particular region. So Carol, before we get started, tell us a little bit about um, you and where you're from and how you how you landed in Spain. Right, yeah. Um, uh, well, we were living in Napa, California and um, which is where my husband was born and raised. And um, we were, um, we had moved around a bunch. So we were still had kind of a 28 year I think, mortgage. And I looked at my husband and I said, we can't retire here because we're going to have pay a big house payment. Even though we had a small house, I mean, we couldn't go into retirement with a house payment basically. Mm, yeah. And if you are people that haven't lived in the same place forever and you haven't paid off your house by the time you retire, you know, it's hard to go into retirement with a house payment. So I looked at him and I said, we've got to do something different. Um, so um, initially we decided that we would um, downgrade. We'd move someplace that was less expensive. And we did that. Um, our daughter moved back to Atlanta, Georgia, where she went to college and her um, her the guy she's going to marry is from there and we had lived in Atlanta prior and we liked it a lot so we went and we moved to Atlanta and we bought a house there a house that we could go into retirement with a small mortgage right mm -hmm. and we had been kind of looking you know toying with the idea of moving overseas at that time um and we were going we were planning on a big trip and of course you know uh the pandemic happened and all that good stuff so we had a lot of time to plan um, and we planned on moving to Spain in 2025 because, you know, affordable, good health care, that sort of thing. And um, we decided, why are we, you know, we looked at each other and said, why are we waiting? Why don't we just go? Mm -hmm. um, you know, a couple of years is not going to make a huge, huge difference. So um, we decided to sell everything and move. And that's what we did. Wow. So in how did you October, October of this year? Okay, very cool. So how did you pick Khadiv? And and I say, tell tell me how you pronounce Khadiv. You're doing a great job. It's, it's like a, with a th. It's almost like a th. It, it's like a Khadiv. It is. And the C's and Z's are pronounced with a slight th, you know, yes. th sound. Um, it's 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 very gentle. It's not a, you know, it's not a lisp per se. I thought right. it was before, but it's really not. Um, but so it's Caddy. Caddy. Okay. And how did you, so pick, it, how did you pick it over all of the different, um, you know, regions and cities in Spain? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there was, there was a list of things that we wanted. One of them, we wanted to be on the ocean we wanted to live in a city. We wanted to be pretty connected to the rest of Europe, you know, and the world, you know, not, not, not in a little barrio where there, there wasn't a, a bus, for instance, um, or, a, or a nearby airplane. Um, so we had a list of requirements and we looked at Valencia. In fact, we took a trip and we went and checked out Valencia and it was too city for us. It was way, way, way too city, meaning that it didn't feel like um, a place on the ocean, even though it is. Yeah. It still just felt like a big city to us. Mm -hmm. So we decided that that was not the right fit. Um, we considered Malaga as well for mm -hmm. the same reasons. Um, these places are all south because we wanted someplace that was warmer in the you know during the year um it gets pretty cold in Astorias and um places north 
Um, so uh, we looked at Malaga, but it's very, very, very full of expats, let's say. Um, it's a great destination and it's a beautiful place, but um, we also wanted some place that felt a little more Spanish mm -hmm. and we wanted to speak Spanish. We didn't want to speak English every day. Mm. Um, we really love the people in Andalusia, this area. Um, they're very warm. They're really welcoming. I, I've got to say Malaga is in Andalusia, but in this particular area in Cadiz, um, which is the province and also the city, um, people are just wonderful. They're great. They're very welcoming. Um, they're, they're very helpful. You know, when you're speaking Spanish, they're forgiving, <laughs> which yeah. is important. And um, it's just, it's a city, but it's not a big city. It's got all the things. It's, you know, anywhere you walk, you're 10 minutes away from the, from the ocean mm -hmm. or less. Nice. So in any direction, because it's a, on a little peninsula and um, it just felt right. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. That yeah. is awesome. Yeah. I spent a little time in Khadiv years ago and I took the ferry over to um, Morocco. I remember it being such a, a quaint and beautiful town. Um, so let's get into like visa requirements. So you yeah. had to get a visa. Did you get a retirement visa mm -hmm. or yeah, they call it a retirement visa, but it's, you know, it's the non-lucrative visa. A lot of people choose the non-lucrative visa if they're mm -hmm. coming, if they're doing like a gap year or something like that, right? And yeah. they're coming with their their families. Um, the non-lucrative visa, I think, is a little easier to get. You just have to prove that you can support yourself okay. financially. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was kind of the no-brainer for us. I did look into, um, because I retired just before we came over um, because we were coming in on, on a non-lucrative visa, but I did look at, you know, digital nomad visa and I looked at um, perhaps having my work, you know, sponsor me. Um, both things are uh, a little more complicated. So the retirement, the quote unquote retirement visa, it is. Okay. And yeah. what, the, what was the minimum income requirement for that? Do you recall? Um, it's, it's 400 times the EPREM, mm -hmm. which is a, is a yearly amount, um, for the, the initial person. So I'm coming in as my husband's plus one, right? He's okay. the guy that's drawing on social security. So he has a regular, a regular money coming in. It's kind of easy. It's kind of the easy button to mm -hmm. kind of show, okay, this guy's got this much money annually, Right. Um, without fail. And then I'm his plus one. So it was, I believe, 400 times the EPREM, which worked out to be like around $28,000 a year. Okay. Um, and then um, I needed amount that then added up to, I think, an extra 4,000. So around 32,000 for 2023. It's going to, okay. it could change next year or not. Sure. So it sounds like that you break that down, that's probably about 2,500 a year, uh, month. Mm -hmm. so you have to show, I guess, about 2,500 a month in income to, that's quali correct. to qualify uh, for the NLV or non-lucrative visa, it sounds like. Yeah. And not, okay. and, and, you know, passive income, right? Yes. And if you Can't have be, passive. Yes. So it sounds like that, that's okay. So Spain is one of those places that people that are only retiring on social security they're not going to be able to get in because social security does it. The average social security, I think is right around 17, 1800 a month. So they're not okay, going to, but that's, yeah, it's not yeah per person. It might be difficult, right? Yeah. yeah. If that's all they have, it could be difficult. I, yeah, I think that, you know, I think it would, the big thing with Spain or any country, right. They, they don't want you to tax their system. They exactly. don't want you to come in and expect to, kind of live off of them, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's talk about flats in, in, in the rentals on the low end. You mm -hmm. had to, you guys had to, to, to find a place to live in mm -hmm. this particular area in Khadiv. What can you find a rental for on the low end? And then let's talk about like comfortable high end type stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, 
rents can be pretty inexpensive. It just depends on where you decide to live, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you're living in the newer part of Cadiz City, which is down the peninsula, I'm I'm at the tip. I'm in Old Town, right? Mm -hmm. So it's more expensive to live in Old Town. Sure. Let's be clear. Um, you know, and we may not live here forever, right? We might stay here for a little while and then decide that we're ready to move farther out or to a you know a little suburb of Cadiz City. Um, we'll see. But um, shoot, you know, you can spend probably six hundred a month for a one bedroom. I'm guessing, um, and lower than that if you're not living in the city proper. Um, okay. And then you can you can spend a lot. So I think it's a pretty pretty big range, really. You're talking kind of like city center area in Cadiz, about six hundred outside of that it'll come down a bit no i'm no i'm thinking that um 600 is probably um parts of the city you could spend yes okay but city center like old town no you probably you need to spend a little bit more than that i think yeah okay just depending on what the living situation is and that's yeah. a one bedroom six six hundred um yeah okay do you, is there, is that the lowest, would you say in that particular re region? Uh, 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 in well, Cadiz? um, let me see. Um, no, actually, um, you can do like, there's 400. I'm looking right now, 400 a month for a three bedroom, 425, three bedroom, 325, um, but I'm not sure if this is this uh, for a bedroom or this. Wait, hold on a second. This might be just for a bedroom and in a house mm -hmm. and existing. Well, four hundred. Yeah, six fifty, six seventy five, seven fifty. I mean, two and three bedrooms. This is eight fifty, seven six fifty. I mean, I think uh, five fifty. But this is for a studio. Six fifty. This is all caddy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that gives three people bedroom, a thousand. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are you guys? What are you guys renting? Do you have a house. one bedroom, two bedroom, or? No, we <laughs> we have a palace. Um, we are in a, a completely reformed building. It was just we kind of happened upon this um, a completely reformed building. So it's from the eighteen hundreds, and it was completely redone. Um, it's a gorgeous building. It's got an elevator, which is not the norm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not the norm. Um, you know, really tall ceilings. It's a gorgeous building. We have three bedrooms. Each room has its own zone, air wow. conditioning and heating. Ooh. Um, again, not the norm completely. Yeah. You know, um, so we pay twelve hundred wow. a month. Wow. Um, but we live in a big apartment. And again, it's got a, a, a lift, an ascensor, you know? Yeah. And what's the um, square meters, you know? Um, whew, I don't remember what the square meters is in this apartment. And I think it's over a hundred square meters. Okay. Um, I'm not sure though, because um, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but we've got two bathrooms again, you know, kind of outside of the norm. Yeah. Um, one bat one bathroom is is really normal and and not having an elevator. We weren't expecting any of that. And we found this place and we just said, okay, we're going for it. And we're right in the middle. We're in a beautiful neighborhood right in the middle of the old town. So yeah. You know, wow. Yeah. You found you found a it sounds like a beautiful place. You're going to have to send me some pictures. Yeah, it's a cool place. I actually have a cool video of it. Yeah, that would that would be great. So let as far as utilities, is that included yes. in the rent down there? Or do, is that separate? No, um, utilities are separate. What we okay. did was um, the people who own this apartment um, have their jobs have taken them to another part of Spain. So um, 
they think that they may return to this apartment at some point. We have a a five year lease. Mm -hmm. Um, So, uh, you know, the way it works, the way that works is that, you know, you usually get like a one year contract. um, But after six months, you can dissolve the contract um, with a 30 day notice. It's it's really Mm -hmm. in the benefit of the renters here. Okay. Kind of like it, how it is in California. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the renters have all the, the uh, you know, hold the upper hand, so to speak. Um, so we, they live in another city. And so what we did is we just put our names, um, the electrical and the, and the Wi-Fi and stuff in our names. Okay. So what is that approximately a month, month for all the uh, water, electric, if you have gas, um, Wi-Fi. We don't have anything gas. So okay. um, we're 100% electric here. Okay. Um, it runs about 90 a month. Okay. Um, you know, we haven't used the AC yet or used it briefly. Um, so that, um, you know, we, we haven't seen an additional charge for that. But although we've used a little bit of heating, okay. um, it's been cold lately. Um, so about 90 a month and then, um, water is running about 45 currently. Okay. How about Wi-Fi yeah. and, and Wi-Fi and, um, we, we have the highest, um, the, the most gigs or whatever of Wi-Fi, okay. um, the, the, the best speed that you can get. Um, and we pay 40 a month for that. Okay. So, so is that all of the utilities, 90, 45, mm-hmm. Wi-Fi is 40. Is there anything else that we're missing? No, no. Okay. I mean, and then, you know, mobile phones. Yeah. Yeah. What's so, the cell go for there? It's pretty cheap, actually, for both of us. I think it's, um, what is it like 30 a month or something like that? Okay. That is good. And I know you can do cheaper, you know, I'm not doing the cheapest thing. Sure. Um, you, can yeah. go, you can definitely go cheaper for sure. Okay. Now, are you guys considering buying? Have you looked at any of the real estate around there? We did initially, we were going to buy right off the bat. We had a, a lender, actually three lenders lined up um, and we started looking, but we didn't want to spend a ton. Um we weren't finding anything uh, that we really liked and a lot of places in the old town need reforming. Sure. Right. They need to be renovated. Um, If we had moved elsewhere, I think we would have had more luck if we had just moved out of old town. Um, If we had moved in the newer part of town, we probably would have found what, what we're used to finding, which is an apartment that is empty, you know, yeah. And being rented empty. I mean, I've got to tell you that the apartment that we rented has everything. It's got a cheese grater. It's got all the furniture, all the wine glasses, all the, all the pots and pans, everything. I mean, we move in and there's sheets for the bed. There, Does it know, have a chef? Does here. it have a chef to cook the paella? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> But, but, you know, when you run an apartment, I mean, you, you, most of the time you get absolutely everything and we didn't wow. come with things. So it was perfect. So let yeah. me ask you this. You mentioned that you had three lenders um, lined up. So most people mm-hmm. that I know that purchase property overseas, they pay cash because mm-hmm. you can't really find lenders to, 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 so did you find lenders in Spain or? Or did you find we lenders? We started in the, the process before we came over, um, just in okay. case. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, you you can't. We we planned on paying most everything, but we wanted uh, a little bit of um, kind of cover, just so in case we had to do renovations and that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we decided not to go that route once we started looking around and seeing that there really wasn't, you know, anything that we were really crazy about right now. Yeah. Um, were these were these banks that. in the U.S. or Spain? No, Spain. In Spain. So yeah, you, you get... have to use banks in Spain to buy in Spain. Oh wow! So you can actually finance through a bank in Spain. Yes. 
Did they yes. tell you, did they give you any idea what the interest rates were over there? Um, it's a little bit lower than it is in the U.S. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but not, a, you know, not a whole lot, but still a little bit lower than the U.S. Interesting. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That is good information. Okay. Yeah. And what were some of the like going rates for like one bedroom flats or two bedroom flats that you looked at? To purchase? You yeah. To purchase. Roughly. We were looking at two and up, right? We weren't because, you know, we're from, from the U S we wanted, we need a room for people to stay in if they come to visit, sure. right? You can't really do yeah. a, a one bedroom kind of preclude everybody who comes to visit. Um, so we were looking at two and, and, and a lot of places are three bedrooms and it's so funny. Um, it's amazing how many bedrooms they'll fit in a really, really small space. Yeah. Um, because sometimes you'll see, oh, it's fit 56 meters and it's a four bedroom. Sure. What? Um, oh, yeah. so, um, yeah, we were looking in the kind of 150 to 200 range okay. and there's plenty of stuff out there you know there's a lot for sale yeah now did you what were these flats almost like condos that you were looking at or were you looking at detached homes we did not look at detached homes because there aren't any detached homes in Cadiz that I know of okay they're all they're all flats. Yeah. So so if, you buy, yeah. so if you purchase a flat for like 150, 200, is there mm -hmm. a, a monthly fee for maintenance? In some, yeah, in a lot of buildings there are. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty much the norm. And the going rate for those is usually between 25 and 35 euros a month. Okay. Um, that's really kind of a normal fee. If they go a lot more than that, you know that's kind of crazy. Okay. Um, you do need to be careful though. You need to make sure that you ask um, and, and check and make sure there isn't something that's going to be done to the building itself. Sure. And that a new buyer is going to have to take part in that because it may have been a decision that was made prior to a purchase. Um, so you just want to double check and make sure that you're not going to be, you know, hit with the bill. Right. to put in an elevator when you are not there to make the decision whether to get an elevator or not. Yeah, good info, good info. Yeah. All right, well, let's dive into entertainment. And uh, we talk about, I always break this down to give people an idea what you should budget for entertainment. And that's a tough one, right? Because it depends on how much you like sangria and paella in Spain. If you really like it, your budget's going to go way up. Well, it's funny because both of those things are really touristy things that the locals don't really even partake in. Okay. So, so that's kind of a funny thing. I mean, sangria is not a thing really. Um, Tinto de Verano is what people drink here. Mm. And that is red wine and lemon soda, basically. <laughs> so they don't do sangria. They do red wine and lemon soda and that's uh, called and that's called tinto what de verano so like de you verano know, okay yeah wine of the summer yeah. basically nice right? um so um and then paella is from valencia so it's mainly you know it's a right. thing that you would eat when you went to valencia and right a rice dish is something you'd eat for lunch and never for dinner you know there's all the kinds of stuff around that but anyway um i don't consider either of those things entertainment though i mean that's food right as far as i'm concerned right. <laughs> i really <laughs> i really um have i have a food budget and, and at first i had a separate grocery shopping budget and eating out budget now i just lump it into food okay. to be honest because most of my budget goes to that let's be clear you know, we like to go out. We are from the restaurant business. My husband was a chef. We like to cook. We like to go out. That's kind of the the point of the whole thing. Sure. And and so there's entertainment for me is like going to a show, um, uh, going to a museum, um, doing something that you would not normally do. And I actually have that added to my vacation budget so entertainment okay. and vacation are kind of together gotcha um so 
So let's do you break want to talk down about yeah, food or you want to talk about entertainment. Well, let's break down groceries first, like in food restaurants and how much do you, do you budget per month for that? Well, I've been budgeting by the week. I use YNAB. So I'm sorry, I plug for YNAB here. It's amazing. I've you never heard of budget. that. What is it? YNAB? It's called YNAB. You need a budget. It's the okay. best software, budgeting software on the planet. Huh. I recommend okay. it. So I budget by the for the week, not okay. for the month. Okay. Um, and so roughly I have $125 a week for both grocery and food. So 250 a week, let's say, right? Okay, so um, so 120 yes. for groceries, one or 125 for groceries and 125 for restaurants per week. Yes. Per week. Yes. So you do 250 a week. Yes. So you guys are doing you a You don't thousand. have to do that. You don't yeah. have to do that. Okay. That's what I do because, you know, I like to go to my little place for breakfast sometimes. Sometimes we want to go out to lunch. Sometimes we go out several times a week. So now it's kind of more of a food budget, right? Because then the weeks that we go out more, we do less shopping. Yeah. Well, how much is a meal? Grocery you... shopping is nominal. If you go out to like a local restaurant, like a local neighborhood mm -hmm. restaurant and have mm -hmm. a nice Spanish dish, I mean, what is a typical cost of that for lunch? We, or... we spend, like if we go out and we have fish, um, let's say if we go out and we have four dishes, let's say four, a salad, um, some other kind of vegetable dish, and let's say two fish dishes. Um, and then I have a couple glasses of wine and my husband has a couple of beers, 50 euros. Okay. So about 50 bucks for a local neighborhood. Yeah. Yesterday we had tapas. It was $19. Okay. Yeah. Tapas are, and tapas, explain to the viewers what tapas are. They're popular. Well, tapas state. are the way they do a tapa is it's kind of a size of a dish, but it's tapas is kind of a, a way of eating. It's like sharing plates, right? Yeah. Um, so what they'll have is they'll have a tapa portion, which is a small portion. They have a media ration, which is a half ration, and then they'll have a full ration. So yeah. they'll have a lot of places will have three sizes of yeah. things that you can get. They're like small plates. A lot yes. of times, if you, you when you go to pubs, they're free. They'll they'll give you when you order a beer or something. They'll give you some in Granada. Yes, yeah. um, in some places you can still order a drink and get olives. Um, but some like you know, Cadiz is a city. They don't give away that much stuff. Um, Granada. Every time you go to get a drink, you get a, a nice portion of tapa. Um, <laughs> you could drink all the evening and, and not spend a dime on food. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it just depends on where you are. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you guys are uh, uh, living large on the restaurants. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. We like that a lot. Good, good for you. That's the, you're right. That's the thing to do. I mean, test out yeah. the wine. The wine is spectacular over there in Spain. The and seafood so, so is, is the food. amazing. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good. That's awesome. So how do you, how do you get around is Khadiv in your opinion, is it walkable or do they have a public transportation system? And what does that cost per month? It's a 10 minute walk to just about anywhere you want to go practically 10, 15 minutes. Um, we, we, we walk a ton. I remember I used to, you know, have a hard time getting my steps in and I wasn't standing enough because I was at a computer all the time. Now, every day, you know, I close my rings twice on my, on my watch and, um, and we're walking a ton. So it's, you can walk anywhere. Um, the bus system is amazing. We used to pay per bus ride and it was like a, a one euro 10, right? But okay. we found out that if you get a local bus card, the ride is 35 cents. Okay. All right. Great. Yeah. That's great information. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about healthcare. Everybody who's considering moving over to a different country are interested in healthcare, especially if you come from the U.S. 
And what can you? Yeah, can you, you have to have a healthcare. You have to have a policy in order to get your visa. Anyway, it's a, it's one of the things that you have to check off the list. Okay. Yep. So once you get a policy, and you're going to get that through either travel insurance or somewhere in the U.S., can you become? Can you take part in the healthcare system in Spain? I mean, yes. can do they have a do they have a a, a public health care system that that uh, is like a national health care like Canada does? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. Um, after a year in the country, you can definitely apply for the public health care. Okay. Um, um, there is a cost to it. It's not free, free, free. So okay. you will have to pay. Um, in some cases, if you're over 65, it's not more economic. If you're under 65, it can be much more economic than private health care. Do be aware, however, that I, um, there's a lot, been a lot of stuff in the local news lately that people are pissed off because the waiting times are longer and longer and longer for public mm. health care. Okay. Um, that the local, you know, people are in Spain are not happy um, because the, the waiting time has, you know, become protracted. And yeah. um, so private health care still might be the best bet, just depending mm -hmm. on your age. And like, can you yeah. get private health care plans over there that are more affordable than what you get in the U.S.? Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. OK. <laughs> it's What's like crazy cheap much cheaper i mean um i think for okay so my husband is 65 i am 62 and i think we pay we pay less than 300 a month for health care for both of um them. yes wow okay. private no copay wow so basically no bill nothing what is right. the what is the healthcare uh, provider called? The insurance provider, do you know? Sanitas. It's one of Sanit the big ones. Sanitas. Sanitas. I heard of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, there's a there's a Desless. There's DKV. There's Sanitas. Um, Sanitas has really good um, uh, reviews. Um, so far, so good. I mean, it's pretty easy when my husband came over and he needed a prescription. He went over half a block away from us. There's a little medical center and he went over there and he waited. They let him wait. He went in to see the doctor. He talked to the doctor. The doctor wrote him a script. He was gone. They didn't ask him for his health care. They just did it to him for him as a favor, basically. Wow. Right. Wrote, yeah. They wrote him three months of scripts and then he was out. Um, I've been to the podiatrist who's not covered. It's not like a regular, it's not part of my healthcare plan. And for my vi first visit, I paid 25 euros. I mean, it's just not, you know, what's, it, what's wrong with the United States? What yeah, is right? wrong with, wow. Well, we've, we've pretty much, we've covered everything. Is there, is there anything else? I mean, when you were prepping and getting ready to move overseas, is there anything that comes to mind? that you could share that could be beneficial for the viewers that we didn't touch on anything? Well, I think that for a lot of people, part of the moving is, you know, letting go of things. <laughs> and, um, and initially it's not easy. And, you know, the problem is too, is that nobody wants your stuff and they certainly don't want to pay what you think your stuff is worth. So <laughs> that's <laughs> true so you're gonna you know you're gonna get pennies on the dollar for your things and and that's kind of good to be honest because because once you let go of it I, I'm telling you it's so wild I mean there's some things that I absolutely love and I did bring a few like you know I brought some personal uh, pictures I brought a little bit of artwork but not much stuff at all um and you know um I, I don't miss the stuff. I mean, you know, it's about experiences and that kind of thing. It's not about stuff. So, yeah. you know, let go of the stuff. I mean, I think that's the, the big thing. Yeah. 
Well, thanks for that. Letting go and starting a new chapter is not easy, but you mm -hmm. guys did it. Yeah. You're, doing it. You're living the dream. It's amazing. And you okay. have affordable health care. I know. I know. There, I, there's so much that I do not worry about now. And I think, you know, de-stressing is, is a biggie, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Carol Loomis, thanks so much for doing the podcast, taking the time out to do this. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Yeah. You have a great evening and I'll, I'll talk okay. to you soon. Thank you.